have been a lot of rallies and marches in Washington, some more historic than others, but the one thing they all have in common is the headcount controversy. When the Promise Keepers held their march in Washington in 1997, it was photographed from the air, and there's no question that it was well over one million people, and the counts ranged from 600,000 to 1.5 million. But for those of us who've covered these rallies for years, we're always amazed at how they come up with the numbers. But those days are over, because in the past, the rallies relied on the media to get their message out, to air their speeches, report their numbers, and be fair about whatever their viewpoint was. Today, everyone has a cell phone, a camera, internet access, websites, Facebook accounts, or other social networking ability. We attended the September 12th Freedom Rally in Washington, D.C., and filmed very close to the stage. We were able to get a long shot of the crowd from the members' balcony of the Capitol, showing from that perspective how many people were really there. It was toward the end of the rally, yet the crowd was still very heavy and was wider than long because there were no jumbotrons I could see at the usual large gatherings on the mall. The organizers did not expect more than about 50,000 people, but they had over 20 times that number. It took two hours for the crowd to walk eight blocks because there were so many people. They even started the march early because there wasn't enough room for everyone to gather in the Freedom Plaza. There were no strangers in the crowd of over a million people because they all came for one united purpose, and that was to tell Congress to stop taxing, spending, and passing unconstitutional bills that are destroying our liberties. Their signs said it all. These were hand-painted, homemade signs, not pre-printed signs by some special interest group. They were creative, fun, educational, and heartfelt. There's a spirit of camaraderie and hope from all these citizens who are frustrated by the tone-deaf treatment they've been receiving from their elected officials. Wake up, America. You've allowed yourselves to become little more than cowering spectators. Watching the nation your grandparents built, the richest, most powerful, most self-sufficient republic in history, with the highest standard of living any nation ever achieved. Now, in the middle of the greatest unprecedented decline in modern history, the world's only superpower can't defend its borders, balance its budget, win its wars, manufacture its own products, or protect its own currency. Your total government debt obligation in the next several years is approaching the gross domestic product of the entire world. You've diminished the future of your children, grandchildren, and ten more generations of Americans. We have had it. Do not forget what this feels like today. Do not go home and not start planning the next event. Keep this connection going because it is we the people that will make a difference. So today a new generation of patriots has emerged to carry that torch of liberty. Not out of hate as the media would suggest, but out of love. A love for this country a love for its principles and its history, and a love for future generations who require, who require our vigilance today. It was a very polite crowd, but with no shortage of controversial leaders who have made it quite clear how they feel about what is happening in the country today. This is not about taxes. This is not about socialism. I want to be clear, we are woken up, we are delivered, we have had enough. We want our freedom back. Pastor James David Manning's YouTube postings are burning up the internet. He does not shy away from controversy and lets his voice be heard. And as a, a black man, and, and probably, I don't know if you're conservative or liberal or whatever like that, do you find it very offensive that the Democrat Party feels that all black people and never question them?
Oh, I mean, I'm incensed by it. I mean, I'm outraged by the fact that the Democrats expect that. But I tell you what, I'm more outraged by the fact that black people actually do that. I am here to stand with all of those that are here for the Tea Party. You know the amazing thing? People in Tennessee are always saying, when is somebody going to fight with us? And I think what they wanted to do was see who in Washington was going to stand with them and fight the bureaucracy that has grown up in the city. Now, we have the president come up here in the House of Representatives. He's an invited guest to the people's house. And he had the nerve to say that we were being dishonest. Came into our house and said we were dishonest. He says, don't talk dishonestly about my bill. I've been reading from this bill. Everyone's been reading from the bill. Well, he said, we've got 30-something proposals. I have a bill. Well, we've got all kinds of solutions, and they're good solutions. We've gotten from a number of people. Is That's not choice at all. Is exempt from this bill? Yes. Okay, why is it that Congress is exempt? If it's so wonderful, it's so great. Because we're being hypocritical as a Congress. What, what, what did we do to help you get all part of that whole Monstrosity that's out there. Well, I think you know, Republicans have a broad range of bills or proposals, none of which will set us on a pathway toward a government takeover of health care. Right? So all of our proposals are based on like, bringing more competition to the private market by strengthening choices among private insurance companies. Their solution is ultimately a government run insurance plan that will lead to a government takeover. I think it's a, a core difference in visions, and the American people get the right. There were others who represented millions who could not attend because they're serving their fellow citizens in the military or protecting lives like the police and the firemen. Well, I'm a first responder firefighter to 9-11, zero in New York. And um, I believe that this movement is the promise of tomorrow at 9-12. And when we were working at ground zero on 9-11, we didn't get a car tomorrow was going to So for me, it's the hope of America. And to see my fellow Americans out here, this looks like the change that no one even counted on in the guys who are in office today. So I'm real proud to be a part of it. Well, thank you, Vinny, so much. Uh, my brother became a firefighter because of the bravery of this man and all the other people who were saving people on 9-11. So thank God you. Bless God bless him. you. There were dozens of speakers and lots of entertainers, including Lloyd Marcus, who traveled on the Tea Party Express across the country visiting 32 cities in 16 days, ending in Washington, D.C. In fact, this was not the only rally like this on September 12th. It happened all over the country. The question is, will Congress listen to their bosses, the people who sent them to Washington, and stop the spending? Will they stop the government intrusion in our lives? Will Congress stop pushing a health care bill down our throats that they haven't even read, don't understand, and will not apply to them? The reason we took the time and effort to cover this amazing gathering of amazing Americans is that their voices, both collective and individually, deserve to be heard by their elected officials. They've been called mobsters, un-American, evildoers, racists, and old, irrelevant Republicans. And that's the mistake they make in assuming that it was a crowd of Republicans. It was very mixed. It was Democrats, Republicans, independents, conservatives, liberals, a lot of people that had voted for Barack Obama, and were very disenchanted with what's happening in the government. They wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, we're not gonna have big spending, we're not gonna have big government intrusion in our lives, and it's been exactly the opposite. This is the outrage of America. They can continue to ignore it and pretend it isn't happening, but it is happening right under their nose, a million people coming together from all over the country on the mall. These fellow citizens are tired of being marginalized, demonized, intimidated, and ignored. They deserve better. And opposing this and honoring them is the least we can do for the preservation of liberty and personal dignity, then this is our contribution to that cause. Please honor these brave Americans by sending this to others who could not be there but were in spirit. Please don't let this effort for the sake of the nation be in vain. We do not need the mainstream media to tell us what we already know. We can report the truth. We can see it with our own eyes, and we will be silent no more. America stands alone as an exceptional nation.